Hi and welcome. So my name is Kelly Mulhall from The Natural Balance and it has been a pleasure to be um, joined or asked, sorry, by Naz from Solo Skin to do a talk today on gut health and skin. Now, being a nutritional therapist, this is something that I see in my clinic day in, day out. So I hope I'm going to be able to give you lots of good tips and information today on what you can do to support your gut health and your skin. So I am a nutritional therapist, but I'm also a yoga and meditation teacher. So I do take a very holistic approach to looking at my client's health. And hopefully that's going to come across today in the talk. So just how I got into this, how I started really was that I suffered with my own gut issues for over 12 years. Um, it started from a travel bug that I picked up when I went to Thailand in my university years um, and I just never got rid of it. And I didn't know I had a travel bug for years and years and years until I started working with a nutritionist myself. But I also suffered with really bad post pill acne. As you can see there, that picture on the on the left, not looking great there. That is after years and years and years of being on the pill, but coming off the pill at a time when I still had gut issues. And because my body wasn't able to detoxify properly, this is why I was starting to have uh, bad skin. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that as we move through um, the masterclass as well. But do please give me a follow on Instagram. It's the natural balance with an underscore at the end. And check out my website and nutrition blog for myself and my other therapists under the natural So what are we going to cover today? We are going to cover the gut and the gut microbiome and what it is. We're going to talk about the connection between the, our hormones in our gut. And this is going to be uh, really important for some of you who may be struggling with acne um, and hormonal acne and, and, and gut issues. I'm going to be talking about common questions around foods and problematic skin, what you should and shouldn't be eating, uh, foods to avoid for good, uh, avoids, foods to eat and avoid, sorry, for good uh, gut and skin health. Then I'll be giving you my special offer and then I'll be giving you my top five tips for great gut and skin health. So please do stay tuned for that. So have you ever experienced any of the below? Have you ever suffered breakouts at different times of the month? possibly related to hormonal acne there? Are you struggling with sluggish digestion or constipation? So maybe going to the toilet less than once a day. Do you experience any rosacea? So flushing of the cheeks, perhaps itchy skin, or do you notice any skin flare-ups that you get around certain types of foods? Now, a lot of these are connected with our gut, our gut and our skin health, and we're gonna to be touching on these topics today. So you're in the right place if you're struggling with any of these. Now I want to touch on face mapping because you may have seen this in magazines tend to have it quite a lot. I use face mapping in my clinic and it's a very uh, well traditionally it's a more Chinese uh, medicine way of looking at your skin. But I use this as a starting point as a as a physical clue to help me see what's going on with somebody's gut issues and for their skin issues, for example. So if you're looking here in the cheeks, this is what I used to really suffer with. There's a lot of digestive issues um, and a lot of spots around in my, my cheeks and my, uh, my cheekbones. Hormonal tends to be around the bottom of the chin here and down on the side of the lips. You also get a lot of digestive issues through the top of the, the forehead as well. And also in between the eyes, I tend to be a lot to do with liver. And, and that can be to do with detoxification. So if you've been drinking a lot, having a lot of sugary foods, you might notice that you have a little bit more breakouts around that area in the forehead. So what is the gut and the gut microbiome? So the gut is made up of trillions of bacteria, fungi, and other microbes. And it plays a very, very important role in our health by helping control our digestion. It benefits our immune system and lots of other aspects of our health. Now, the gut is very important when it, become, when it comes to detoxification of hormones. It's very important when it comes to absorption of nutrients. It helps modulate our immune system because so we have what's called, uh, well, what's what we have, what's called, it is called our immune system. We have about 70 to 80% of our immune system can be in the gut. The gut has a very big impact on our weight because to do with the hormones that we, um, the hormones that are released when we eat food, it has a big impact on our energy and our sleep. And it also has a big impact on our metabolism, which is, I'm sure a lot of us know, you know, we always think of the gut probably the first thing to do with our metabolism. But it, it's so important. All the bacteria that are in there are, are, are 
designed to support us in some way. Not all of them. Some of them we may have um, unbeneficial or, or pathogen, pathogenic bacteria in there. But generally, the bacteria that we have in our gut is there designed to help and support us in what we call our commensal microbiome. But sometimes when we have an imbalance or an overgrowth of certain bacteria, when we have a more what's called dysbiotic state, we're going to find that we're starting to experience some of the symptoms which we're going to be talking about today. So I want to touch on leaky gut. Also touch on, I'm going to really be going into leaky gut because this is such an important point when it comes to skin health. And this is something that I really suffered with myself was having leaky gut after years and years of IBS that when I came off the pill, I wasn't ex uh, excreting my hormones and my toxins. They were circulating around in the bloodstream and they were coming out through the skin. And I was getting a bit of a mix of both hormonal spots around here, but also spots in the cheeks, which are often to do with, um, with gut issues. So, so what causes then leaky gut? I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail, but it is essentially where the tight junctions, so as you can see there on the left, the tight junctions, which make up the cells of the, the gut, have become leaky. Toxins, bacteria get into the bloodstream and then they will start to circulate around the blood where we don't want them to be. But what's important about um, improving leaky gut, which we will go into in more depth, is that there's this mucous membrane or this barrier that sits on the top. And this mucous membrane has lots of enzymes. It has lots of our immune cells. And it's what stops the bacteria and the toxins from getting through into the bloodstream. So when this is damaged, so whether it may be damaged through types of foods we're eating, so maybe damaged by a travel bug or food poisoning, we start to lose that thick mucous membrane on the, um, the intestinal wall, which is what is our sort of first line defense and barrier from it getting through into the, the bloodstream. So causes of leaky gut, this can be from inflammatory foods, so sugars, alcohols, caffeine, dairy. And when I say dairy, it's not that it's that inflammatory, but if you have if you are reacting to the protein in dairy, the, the, the proteins that are in there and you don't have the enzymes in your gut to break it down, it's going to create more inflammation in there. And this can happen with a lot of different types of foods like gluten as well. So inflammatory foods are a really big cause of leaky gut gut infections so bacterial infections like I had parasites they can create more inflammation in the gut maybe yeast infections overgrowth with it came candida intestinal parasites small intestinal bacterial overgrowth which I will touch on um, as we go through this masterclass as well uh, long-term medications so whether you're you know for me for example birth control on that for maybe 15 years that had a big impact on my gut um, lots of prescription medications can really start to create inflammation uh, and cause a leaky gut as well as environmental toxins so things like heavy metals and, and mercuries which often be more, more factory type chemicals but things that can leak into the the blood through uh, plastics, for example, BPA, we're getting those xenoestrogens, those toxins are coming into the bloodstream and they're going to start to cause havoc in the gut or from the gut into the bloodstream, sorry. So I want to talk about hormones, the gut in our skin, because I presume a lot of you of you that will be watching this are going to be having issues with acne. And a lot of acne can be related, hormonal acne can be related um, with the gut and because of the way that we are not excreting or we are or not excreting hormones through the gut. So just a couple of points that I want to no note here. And one of the first one is irregular bowel movements. So if you're someone that is maybe constipated or you have diarrhea, you're not excreting the hormones back out of the body. And when we don't excrete the hormones back out, they're able to start to recirculate. And when they start to recirculate, we start to have um, estrogen dominance. And for women, you may start to notice that you have PMS, mood swings, breast tenderness, um, acne, and often testosterone as well. High levels of testosterone can increase sebum production, can increase more um, of an acne picture in the body. So we want to try and make sure that you're going to the toilet regularly. Um, by by getting rid of these toxins, you're going to have less issues through your skin. Now, leaky gut causes the toxins to cross from the digestive tract into the bloodstream, which we saw. And this can also have an impact for a bit of an immune response. And people who are suffering with maybe itchy skin or eczema or psoriasis, and these last two are very much connected with the immune system, we're going to start to trigger the immune system because things are think that the immune system is thinking, oh, there's something coming to the bloodstream here, which it shouldn't be. 
that's going to have more of an impact and a flare on the eczema and psoriasis. Then a low fiber and a high fat diet can cause inflammation in the gut, which can lead to reactions to often to food, maybe rosacea and redness. So again, if you're not, and we'll talk about that, how you can re rectify that and what types of diet you want to be eating um, to get enough types of fiber in there. But really starting to improve that is going to reduce the rosacea and anything, uh, anything crossing that blood blood brain barrier, which is causing a reaction, redness, flares, eczema, skin, acne. And I've put in there as well about autoimmune hypothyroid because um, hypothyroidism is when our thyroid, which is the gland in our neck, is a little bit sluggish and it's not working necessarily and as op optimally as it could do. But often hypothyroid can be an autoimmune condition and autoimmune conditions are triggered by the body attacking itself. Now, why may the body attack itself? It's when things are getting into the body that necessarily shouldn't necessarily be there. So, for example, if you are someone that's got leaky gut because maybe you've had a you know, history of antibiotics or a travel bug or bacteria, toxins are getting into the bloodstream. The body is thinking, gosh, this shouldn't be here. And it's mounting an immune response. It's creating an immune response. What's that going to lead to autoimmune conditions, potentially things like uh, hypothyroid, maybe more uh, like psoriasis and, and having an immune reaction. So I've put it in there because hypothyroidism can also lead to dry, itchy skin. So it's definitely where things de definitely try to investigate a little bit if you are struggling with any of these um, symptoms. So I've been talking about excreting the hormones, but why do you want the hormones? Well, hormones, first of all, are chemical messages in the body and they govern absolutely everything. Because some of the, the main ones or a lot of the main ones here, uh, we govern as our metabolism. So things like insulin, cortisol and our thyroid hormones. Um, we'll talk about them a little bit later on as well. For women, LH and our FSH, along with progesterone, estrogen, testosterone are all ones that you've probably heard of um, in the past, which can have an impact. We know throughout the month our estrogen and testosterone are the ones that really, uh, estrogen and progesterone, sorry, are the ones that really have an impact on our mood, on our skin, on um, how, how we feel, how we sleep. So we do want to make sure that we're excreting any excess hormones out of the body. Um, thyroid hormones, as I mentioned as well, these are what um, governs our metabolism. Uh, and, and when we have an excess of female hormones in particular, you're going to start to think, see more things like acne. Um, for women as well, mood swings, PMS, breast tenderness, water retention, fatigue, fibroids, low libido, PCOS, are a lot of the, uh, the female hormones that we see start to cause a bit of ha havoc in the body. So small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you might think, OK, what's this? I've never heard of it. But some, this is something I see in my clinic probably 70 percent of the time, 80 percent of the time, especially when I'm dealing with anybody that has gut issues. So whether that's constipation or diarrhea. And that is because SIBO does account for nearly almost 80 percent of IBS cases. Now, where I'm going with this. If you're suffering with IBS, you may actually be suffering with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is where bacteria has migrated from the large intestine where it should be into the small intestine where it shouldn't be. And when food gets into the small intestine, what will happen is it will start to ferment the food that um, is in there and that will start to cause gases and particularly smelly gas so if you're someone that thinking okay that doesn't smell right it's very methane -y or smells like rotten eggs it's a good indication that you may have a bacterial overgrowth in the gut where it shouldn't be bloating is a very big one so bloating especially after certain vegetables um, that's a very big sign and, a, and a, a red flag for potential bacterial overgrowth constipation or diarrhea it's probably about a a 30 40 split with constipation and diarrhea bacteria SIBO uh, uh, sorry um rosacea acne and itchy skin are something I see a lot as well and that is because you know we've got a lot of bacteria giving off their toxins which are getting into the blood which is circulating around the blood which are coming out through our skin because our skin's our largest organ so again they're a bit of trigger factors there or red flags sorry should I say Reflux. So potentially, uh, if, you, if you're noticing you get a lot of reflux there, it's often that you haven't got too much stomach acid. It's that you've got not enough. And so the body is, uh, the, the food is sitting in the stomach. It's fermenting and it's creating gases, which are giving off reflux. And when you haven't got enough stomach acid, you're then finding that the bacteria is more susceptible to get through and not be killed off in the stomach where it should be killed off and then pass into the small intestine. 
fatigue, achy joints and muscles and brain fog are also really big um, symptoms of SIBO. Now, I've put all of those there because I want you to have a little think and think, does this sound like any of the symptoms that I've got? Because if you're struggling with any skin issues, but you've also got some of these other factors and, and symptoms that I've mentioned here, it's highly possible that there is a, a SIBO or a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth going on. And it's definitely something you want to be addressed. And for the, for the bloating, so you understand what I mean here by the bloating, I put a picture of one of my clients here, Becky, who on the left, she said she looked pregnant and, you know, she could pass for being pregnant there with that bloated belly. She had SIBO, she had a lot of skin issues. And as we got rid of the SIBO, her skin issues massively cleared up. And you can see there the picture on the right is once we'd managed to get rid of the bloating. So did you know a poor diet will not only have an impact on your skin, but it's also going to have a huge impact on every other area of your life as well. I'm going to go into the skin a little bit more detail as we go through this, but just so I want you to start thinking about your body holistically and thinking of all the other possible trigger factors that may be causing you to feel a certain way. So if you're thinking, OK, I'm not eating right, but oh, it's only impacting my skin. It may also be impacting your PMS. Have you got breast tenderness, irritability, cramping, like painful periods throughout the month? Mood swings, fatigue. Is your weight fluctuating? Are you finding that you've got a lot of cravings? Have you got poor memory and concentration? As soon as you start to improve your diet, you will start to see all of these other areas of your life improve. And this is from coming from someone who never used to be into nutrition, someone who used to live off ready meals, takeaways, a lot of pastries were my, uh, my go to. And as soon as I started to eat proper meals, and I'm going to tell you how to do that in a moment, then proper meals and get the right fruits and vegetables in there. Not only did my gut and my skin improve, but so did my energy, my my cravings completely vanished, my weight stabilized, everything will start to fall in place when you start to get um, your, your diet sorted. So I want to talk about gut health and uh, your stress here, because there's something that maybe we don't necessarily tie the dots with. Unless you're someone that has very uh, stress related IBS, then you've probably noticed that you get a lot of stress going on in the body and you're feeling it in the gut as well. But when we when we are under stress, we start to have an impact on what's called our gut brain access. And we have a, a, a nerve, as so let's say a vein, a nerve that goes from our brain. It's called the vagus nerve, and it goes through all of the vital organs, our heart, our lungs, into our stomach, and it has um, a knock-on effect on all of these vital organs when it's under stress. And when this vein, or this not vein, when this nerve is under stress, it creates more of what's called a dysbiotic state in the gut. We create more inflammation. We call, there's going to possibly be more overgrowth of, of the bad bacteria in the gut. We're going to find that there's more inflammation, which is going to lead to leaky gut, which means those tight junctions, which I showed you before, are going to start to get a little bit more gappy. So bacteria and toxins can start to get into the bloodstream. And what happens when all of this cocktail of things starts to build up is that we're going to start to lead to more, thing, more things like acne, rosacea, we're going to have more of an immune response, you're going to notice things like eczema and psoriasis starting to flare. So it's really important that we try and manage our stress levels where we can, both physical and um, mental stresses, to try and uh, improve our gut health as well. So a low fiber, high fat diet, which is what we typically call the Western diet. I said to you, I was going to tell you foods to eat and avoid. And this is what we're coming to now is the Western diet, which tends to be higher. It's the pyramid on the right there, tends to be higher in fat, saturated fats, refined carbohydrates, so pastas and breads. Let's to be, to be a lot of dairy in there, a lot of meats. Is, is the sort of staple of what you're eating. So it's sort of meat and pasta and meat and bread type diet. And then as we go down the pyramid, we know we've got smaller amounts of complex carbohydrates, so beans and grains and lentils, and then only a small amount of vegetables. And this reverse pyramid as, as it is, this Western diet made up with more processed foods is gonna create more dysbiosis in the gut. And that is because we are not gonna be feeding the good bacteria in our gut, which thrive off fruits and vegetables because they don't have their food source. So what happens is the bacteria that we don't necessarily want there will start to increase. 
So what we want to aim for is more of this Mediterranean diet. So we have higher fiber, we have natural foods, and the base of the pyramid really is full of fruits and vegetables. We've got complex carbohydrates, our grains, our beans, our lentils. We've got small amounts of dairy and saturated fats. And, you know, we do need fats. So, you know, we want to be going for things like olive oils and avocado and nuts and seeds and oily fish. And then at the top of the pyramid is more of the saturated fats and any of the snacks and the sweets and the treats that we want to have in moderation. Now, going for this Mediterranean diet is the key, because if you if you're living off what's called the Western diet, you're going to have poor gut health because you're not feeding the bacteria. Poor gut health is going to lead to that dysbiosis. The more inflammation, the more leaky gut. You're going to have more redness, more acne, inflammation, more eczema, more psoriasis. You're also going to have a weaker immune system because food is our immune system, sorry, is buffered and bolstered by the phytochemicals that we get in food. And phytochemicals is what protects the plant from bacteria and viruses and invasion and, and, and everything that basically helps it grow nice and strong. When we eat the, the plant, we take on those, those phytochemicals too. So they're antibacterial, anti-tumor, anti-cancer, antiviral. And so the more that we put those fruits and vegetables in the diet and the more variety we have, the stronger and healthier our immune system is going to be the less of an immune reaction we're going to have in particular when it comes to things like eczema or psoriasis or or even with any um, leaky gut issues that may then lead towards rosacea or acne so it's really important that we focus more on that western uh, that mediterranean diet and less on the western diet so I wanted to talk about my client Aisha here because she came to me, she had face and back acne, she had a lot of gut issues and she wanted to start on antibiotics to clear up her skin. She was struggling with weight fluctuations, she had poor sleep, she was mixed between bloating and constipation and if she didn't go to the toilet, you know, it would be less than once a day. And she had a lot of chocolate cravings, which we all do. So I'm not going to um, I'm not going to have a go at her for that one too much. But but what do we do to try and improve it? Well, luckily, we were able to complete or well, not luckily, because I knew we wouldn't have to, because this is what, what I do. This is the, the science behind nutrition is we did, she did not need to go on the antibiotics. Absolutely did not need to go on them at all. I started her off on my 10 week hormone balancing program, which I will explain to you a little bit about in a moment. But what I really did was educate her on the foods to help improve her digestion. Because as I said before, when you are uh, constipated, you'll start to reabsorb toxins and hormones and, and chemicals back into the bloodstream because it sits too long in the colon. And so the more that we can get food uh, and toxins and waste, et cetera, excreted normally, the less it's going to have an impact on um, the body's ability to reabsorb things that shouldn't be reabsorbed. So getting her bowels moving, this is going to help clear out the excess estrogen as well, because she had a lot of hormonal acne around, around the, the chin area. Getting her to eat the right types of food to help with the bowel movements, which will then help naturally as well excrete the estrogen. And combined with that is getting her to, to drink some water. So water is very important to flush out toxins. Most of our body is made out of water. And one of the starting points I say to people is, you know, if they are constipated is they've either not got enough water or if they, they often haven't got enough uh, fiber. So making sure that she's getting enough water in there as well really started to help move the bowels. And then we removed a lot of the inflammatory foods. So gluten, dairy, alcohol, sugar, and caffeine. And that is because we wanted to heal the gut lining. We didn't want it to be so inflamed so that she was getting that leaky gut, so that toxins were starting to pass into her bloodstream and causing a lot of the, the, the spots that were in the cheeks and also down here on, on the chin as well when we, she wasn't um, detoxifying her hormones properly. And what did Aisha say? Well, she said it, it worked. Life changing was her words. Not only did we help her digestion, but we managed to improve her mood swings. She found that her appetite man, um, was stabilized as well because she was always snacking because she wasn't eating the right types of foods. She's finding balance in her weight and being life changing. It was for me as well. It was, it was incredible just to see such a transformation for someone who just wasn't eating the right types of foods. And so by teaching her and educating her and what she needs to be doing, she was able to completely take control of her health. And it really did just have a knock on effect from everything. No antibiotics, clear skin, better mood. Her anxiety went as well. And she was really struggling with that because we were healing her gut lining, less toxins and waste crossing the blood, blood brain barrier 
having an impact in cloud, clouding your judgment, creating that brain fog, everything massively improved for her. So then I'll talk about Rebecca. Rebecca was a really interesting case as well because she came to me with acne and gut issues and she had a very similar history to me. Um, she'd had a travel bug. She'd been to India and picked up a travel bug. And since then, it just was never right. And I usually say to people, you know, is there a triggering point? Can you remember when you last felt that things were OK? It's usually a travel bug. It's usually history of antibiotic use or some sort of food poisoning. And so Becca had a mix of constipation and diarrhea. So I was starting, OK, yep, yeah, is this a bit of a flag for SIBO, like I mentioned earlier? She was getting the acne and the red and the inflamed skin. And it was not only it was jaw, jaw but it was also in the cheek. So I was like, OK, yep, yeah, could be a mix of leaky gut and we're not detoxifying our hormones here. She was having post-nasal drip, which can often be to do with um, mucus, overproduction of mucus, which can be to do with the body's inability to break down histamine. Histamine is broken down in the gut and that's in lots of foods, but we really wanted to try and remove any mucus um, creating, uh, causing foods, which things can be like dairy, can, can create, a, create a lot of mucus in the, in the gut, in the body, sorry. Uh, brain fog as well, really struggling with brain fog. Again, so that for me, there's a bit of a, a red flag there thinking, yes, could this be to do with toxins crossing the blood brain barrier that have come from her leaky gut? So what did we do? Well, this is something I do with a lot of my clients. And this is what I did with myself and found that I had a parasite is I did a comprehensive stool analysis on there. And we did find that she did have a parasite. And this is why she would have been flicking between the constipation and the diarrhea because she was getting a bit inflamed with, with the, the, the gut was inflamed, sorry, with, with a, a, a pathogen causing this. So we went in and did a, a course of herbal antimicrobials, which are like nature's version of an antibiotics, which are proven to be just as effective of bacteria, but much less harmful on the gut. So we did a, a course of herbal antimicrobials to try and kill off that parasite and also bring her other in, um, balance of bacteria levels back down into alignment. We supported her with a low FODMAP diet, and that was because we were looking at, there was a bit of a SIBO picture there. She had a lot of the gas, she had a lot of the bloating, she was reacting to vegetables. It, the, there was bacteria levels in her stool analysis, which sort of confirmed that that was what was going on. You can do a separate breath test to confirm it, but I can usually get enough information from the stool test to check if there's a SIBO picture. So we put her onto a low FODMAP diet, which is basically starving the bacteria of their food source, which tends to be a lot of well, certain types of vegetable carbohydrates. So we removed them for a little bit of time. We put in a lot of mucous membrane and gut healing support through the types of foods that we were providing her with natural supplementation so that we could repair the gut lining. We put a lot of fiber in there once we'd gone through those previous two phases so that we could help excrete the excess estrogen, which is causing a lot of the, um, the, the spots around the chin. Again, we made sure that she was putting a lot of the water to flush out the toxins there. And we also completed, or she also completed, sorry, my 10 week, the hormone balancing program, which we were doing alongside our consultations. And I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit about what that is as well, because it's really gonna help support you if you're struggling with anything that we've been talking about today. So red flags for gut health. I think this is really important that I mention this because for someone that has themselves tr struggled for, you know, I had about IBS for about 12 years and for seeing it in my clinics, if you are struggling with any of these things with these red flags, I highly, highly recommend you get in touch so that we can investigate a little bit further. So if you're struggling with long-term IBS, so whether you've had constipation, diarrhea, or severe bloating, and by long-term, you know, chronic is anything over three months, so 12 weeks, any type of gut issue should have repaired themselves by now if it was just something small. There's probably something a little bit more severe going on if you've had it long-term, so definitely get in touch about that. Mucus or blood in the stool are big triggers as well, or they're big flags to say something's going on, so we want to do further investigations. Um, the gas, the smelly gas, if you're getting bloating and you're getting gas, or even if you're just getting gas and it smells like rotten eggs or there's a methane smell, there's definitely a bacterial imbalance going on there. It's possible that you may have SIBO. Um, so it's something that we want to work on to try and kill off that bacterial imbalance. 
If you've had any history of antibiotic use, so recurrent antibiotics, any travel bugs, any food poisoning, again, that's, and it's never been quite right since, it's possible you've got a pathogen, a bug, an infection, a yeast, something fungus that we need to be um, working on. And any, any Crohn's, colitis, diverticulitis, you will probably know if you have these, you will have been diagnosed, but it can take a long time to get diagnosed with any of these inflammatory bowel diseases. Um, there are investigations that you can do, blood tests and stool tests. So it is important that you manage, if you do have IBD, that you do manage this um, with the right types of food and diet, because it can um, prevent and, and keep you in remission for a lot longer from having a flare. So please, please, please don't leave these symptoms untreated. I wish I had known way before the 12 years was up that if I spoke to a nutritionist, I would be able to improve my symptoms. So please don't leave it that long. Please do reach out. So just a little recap so far, we've talked about leaky gut and the possible causative factors. So whether that's, um, uh, you know, long-term antibiotics or travel bugs or bacterias or high inflammatory food, sugars and caffeines and alcohols, um, heavy metal toxicity, anything that has caused a leaky gut, you're probably going to know because you're going to start to see it through your skin. So you want to be looking into um, getting that sorted. Stress is a very big impactor on gut health. Remember, it creates more of that dysbiotic and that inflamed state in the gut. Uh, same with the SIBO here, usually a trigger for SIBO. It's usually possibly that you've got low stomach acid. So if someone there is suffering with reflux, again, that's the first sign that low stomach acid bacteria is getting through into the gut. Uh, you maybe have a, other bacterial imbalances in there. So you want to be looking at that if you've got any of the gases or the bloating. The Western diet is going to make your skin worse because you haven't got the nutrients in there to absorb, to be absorbed, sorry, which is going to help good and promote good skin health. You know, you need a lot of zinc, you need a lot of vitamin A. Um, so make, making sure that you're having that more Mediterranean diet with lots of fruits and vegetables and then minimizing the meats and the animal products as you go up and the saturated fats. I'm not saying you have to go vegan or vegetarian by any means, but the more that you minimize um, those saturated fats and processed foods and simple carbohydrates, so pastas and, and any ready meals or takeaways, sweets, cakes, the less you have that, the more it's gonna be beneficial for your body. And then the importance for gut health and hormone detoxification. And, you know, anybody dealing with skin issues, really, you want to be looking at your, your detoxification pathways, as particularly for your hormones and so making sure that not only for your sex hormones, if there's estrogen or testosterone imbalance creating skin, but also making sure that, you know, we're supporting the thyroid. If we haven't got um, suboptimal or, or, or sort of hyperthyroid, um, we want to be making sure that you are um, excreting any excess wastes and hormones through the bowel. So how can I help you improve your gut, your skin and your overall health? I am going to tell you now how I can do that, but I want you to stay tuned because I have got my top five tips for better gut and skin health, which I'm going to share with you after I've just given you a little bit more info about how I can support you um, after this, uh, this talk. So I did mention a couple of times there about the 10 week hormone balancing program. And this hormone balancing program, you're probably thinking, why is she talking about hormone balancing? We're talking about gut. It's called the hormone balancing program, but really it is all my top nutritional advice that I give my private nutrition, private nutrition clients, but just at a fraction of the cost. It's not just for people who have hormonal imbalance. This course is going to teach you absolutely everything you need to know for good gut health, for skin health, for energy, for sleep, and just general good nutrition. Everything that's covered in the course is going to be backed by science, research and real life clinical experience from myself, but also from the clients that I see in my clinic. And why I'm offering as a, as a program to, to work with me is because it, it's a program, you do it your own pace. It's a lot more cost effective than working one on with a one on one with a nutritional therapist. And it gives you a chance to really learn everything you need to know about having a healthy, balanced diet, which is going to improve every single aspect of your life, your health, your physical health and your mental health. So why do hormone, why do the hormone balancing program if you've got gut issues? Well, as I said, hormones are excreted through the gut. Now there is, although it's called the hormone balancing program, we do have a section on hormones. I'll tell you about that in a minute. 
it really is giving you everything you need to know about a healthy balanced diet it's going to have help you have clearer skin brighter eyes better complexion that's what happened to me it happens to all my clients you saw the pictures there i showed you on my case studies it's going to help you have the right types of foods and fruits and vegetables so that you've got better digestion and regularity you're going to find that for women there's a really big improvement in your pms if that's something that you suffer with you're going to boost your immune system because we're going to get all the nutrients we need in there to have a nice, healthy, strong immune system. I'm going to teach you how to identify triggers that may be causing gut issues or maybe causing your skin issues and generally going to get more motivation and inspiration for your home cooking. So what does the course cover? So it's over 10 weeks and you may think, gosh, oh God, I can't do 10 weeks. That's loads. The reason I've created it over 10 weeks is because I'm just giving you one small thing to focus on at a time. I actually used to do the course in a shorter period of time, but I decided to extend it because the idea is I just want this to fit in with your daily lives. People often work one on one with a nutritionist when there's a lot that they want to go into. But if you're just someone that's like, I just want to make sure I'm putting all the right things in there to improve my gut, my skin health, my overall health. then this is the program for you, because each week we just have one small focal point so that by the time we get to week 10, you're not even thinking about week one anymore and what you changed and what you amended in your in your diet, because it was such a, a small thing. It's now just become habit. So we'll talk about blood sugar balancing and hormone balancing in week one, which I'm going to explain to you a little bit about in a moment um, and why that's important. We'll talk about fiber, fruits and vegetables and how these impact our digestion and our detoxification pathways. I'll be going over complex and simple carbohydrates, what they are, how they impact our cravings. This is a really big one for cravings and energy levels. So stay tuned for this one if that's something that you suffer with. We'll be talking about fatty acids and saturated fats and the types of fats to be eating and the types of fats to be minimizing. And that's also for, for skin and gut health for everything, to be honest, hormones uh, too. Um, we'll be talking about portion sizes, how it can reduce our cravings, get all the nutrient requirements we need. Again, it's really important for cravings this week on portion sizes. And then week six is a little bit more focused on, on hormones, but it's by no means, you know, it's not going to be unrelevant. It's completely relevant to everyone. And that is talking about the phytoestrogens and the xenoestrogens. So phytoestrogens are uh, types of estrogen mimickers that we do want in the body, which have a big impact on skin and PMS. And xenoestrogens are the ones that create more havoc with our hormones and then are the ones that we want to minimize. So we will explain how to manage those um, and what you need to do about them. Then in week seven, we'll talk about caffeine and caffeine and alcohol and water and why we need to uh, or why they impact our skin and what we can do um, to try and minimize their, their damage to our skin, to our hormones, to our mood, our, our you know, painful periods. Week eight, we'll talk about exercise. You know, not all exercise is equal when it comes to our gut health and our stress levels. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Why? You know, I see a lot of women who may come into my clinic and they say, oh, I'm working six days a week, working out six days a week and I'm not losing weight. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the way you're going to lose weight. It could be to do with hormones. And we're going to talk about that and how that works in week eight to get the, the best out of the types of exercise for you. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, sleep, why it's important, how to have good sleep, how to have uh, increase the quality of our sleep. Sleep is when we repair. So we all know what we feel like when we've had uh, we've got bad sleep. Week nine is going to be able to, uh, to, to give us some, some tips and guidance on how to manage that. And then stress. So we've talked a little bit today about stress already and how stress has a big impact on the gut. So I'm going to be putting there important um, things to think about and, and ways to try and reduce our stress levels so that we can better manage our all round health. So who is the hormone balancing program for? Well, as you can see there, it really is for anyone. I specifically designed it for people who were dealing with hormonal imbalance, such as acne or PCOS, but really it's designed for everyone because it's so broad in what I cover and what I discuss in order to help balance the diet. So if you're on here and you're thinking, yes, I've got acne, this will help. If you've got eczema and psoriasis, absolutely, this will help. Itchy skin, irregular bowel movements, sluggish digestion, so going to the toilet less than once a day struggling with PMS, mood swings, anxiety, cramping and bloating around your period, poor sleep, 
cravings weight gain, then this is going to be the absolute best course for you because you are going to learn everything you need to know how to um, improve all of these symptoms that you're struggling with. I would say the course is not suitable for those if you've already got IBD, so Crohn's or colitis, a diagnosis of that, I would just check with me first, just because sometimes when you put more fruits and vegetables in the diet, you can make things a little bit worse. So we want to make sure we're not doing any of that for anyone um, alongside with the red flag. So if you are really struggling, maybe with the gas and the bloating, um, maybe, you know, mixing between constipation and diarrhea, it could be that there's some sort of SIBO picture going on there. And it's probably worth investigating that a little bit first. And, and pregnant women, I say, again, most of the course is pretty much good to do, but I would just probably check with me first, just because we don't want to be doing anything in there with the phytoestrogens that are going to be impacting um, the hormones too much. So what's included each week, you'll get a new module um, sent to your inbox along with your own portal. Um, you, can, you can log in and, and watch it at your own pace. So you get your step-by-step -step guide video, you get audio and video files, there's complete downloadable shopping lists, meal plans, recipes, and worksheets, which you can track all of your progress. There's lots of yoga videos, breathing exercises, and meditations. And, and it's really designed for you if you want to take an independent approach to do things on your own, because you think, you know what, I just want to know everything that I need to know to have a healthy balanced diet for me and my family and this course will give you that and you do have the flexibility to go through at your own pace yes you will get the uh the videos into your inbox each week but you can watch them at your your own pace so the good bit, I am giving it a, on special offer today. Normally it's £189 for the 10 weeks, but I'm giving you a 24-hour special offer for watching the webinar. And that is going to be £129 if you book the course before midnight to, tomorrow night, sorry, on January uh, the 25th. So the course works out at less than £13 a week, which is really achievable, really accessible, and it's equivalent to about £600 worth of private nutrition coaching if you were to work with me one on one. And like I said, I am giving you all of the information that I give my private nutrition clients, but just at a complete fraction of the cost. And if you're unsure if this is course is for you or you've got some of the other issues that I mentioned there about the, the red flags and you want to find out in a little bit more detail if you can, um, if, if, if this is the right thing for you to do, then I am offering some 15 minute phone calls, which you can click on the link, which you will have access to um, and in the replay as well and on the emails to book yourself a call with me to discuss if this is the right path for you to go down. So please do check out the course. There's more on my website and there's also more on the links that you're going to be shared with you. Um, in the email so do have a little look through those so now back to my five top tips for better gut and skin health what you have all been waiting for number one my number one top tip is eating three meals a day which may sound silly what okay yep what about fasting what about you know having a small lunch or a soup and salad no if you want to keep your blood sugar balanced, which I will explain in a second. But if you want to manage your energy levels, if you want to manage your cravings, if you want to make sure that you've got um, good detoxification pathways, you want to be eating three meals a day so that you are or all of this functioning. So if you leave your, uh, you know, if you don't eat enough food, sorry, throughout the day, your blood sugar levels will drop because the, the, the sugar comes from the food. And our body uses that sugar for energy. But if you let the blood sugars drop, we'll start to have a cortisol increase, which is cortisol is a stress hormone. It's what wakes us up in the morning. And you've probably heard of cortisol before. But having that cortisol increase is going to start to have more of an, a cause more of a hormonal imbalance. And that's because cortisol is also a, <clears throat> um, a competitive, it's competitively made with uh, progesterone. And progesterone is what we have as one of our sex hormones with estrogen. And so if we have too much cortisol made and not enough progesterone, we're going to have estrogen increase. And an increase of estrogen is going to lead to things like PMS, acne, uh, mood swings, anxiety, painful and heavy periods. So we really don't want our blood sugar levels to drop too much so we don't have that cortisol spike. But also dropping um, the blood sugar too much can often lead to things like eczema and rosacea. And again, that's often to do with the, the, the cortisol spike is creating more of an immune response and creating more inflammation um, in the body. And inflammation and immune response is what people then start to see when they start to see a flare with their skin, their acne, their rosacea, maybe psoriasis flare. So we don't want the blood sugar to drop. 
And we don't want it to spike too high either because higher levels of insulin are gonna start to see things more increase of sebum, back, sebum production uh, and more of the, the P. acnes bacteria. And you will know often when you've had a lot of sugar because you maybe notice that you're getting more spots around the, the forehead because it's trying to detox the, through the liver. You maybe notice that the face is a little bit brighter and redder. <clears throat> so trying to manage um, having three meals a day so the blood sugar stays in the middle of the, uh, the, the chart where we want it to be rather than peaking or troughing. So number two, my... Biggest number tip two, top two number tip, sorry, is <clears throat> increasing your fiber. So your fiber, your fruits and vegetables, your beans, your grains and legumes. Now, I talked earlier about excretion and detoxification of hormones and wastes. Now, this is what happens through the gut. It also happens through the liver, but a lot of it happens through the gut. But when you have loose bowels, so you aren't, you know, th things are transiting too quickly and, and not formed through the gut. <clears throat> we need to try and bulk the stool in order for us to be able to detoxify those hormones and waste so that that stool can act like a bit of a toilet brush as it goes through the gut. If you're constipated, on the other hand, we need to soften the stool to try and make it easier to pass so that then hormones and toxins and waste can't recirculate into the blood. So wanting to get a mix of what's called soluble and insoluble fibers and soluble fibers are <clears throat> fibers that tend to absorb water and insoluble fibers tend to be a little bit more like roughage. So just thinking, you think, OK, yes, an apple's going to absorb water, maybe sweet potato, <clears throat> great forms of soluble fiber and things like salad leaves, which, you know, a bit more waxy but fruits and vegetables are a little bit more like roughage. They're going to help excrete. And you want a mix of both. You want the soft and the, the roughage to create a nice, big, healthy stool to push everything out of the digestive tract. So then stress levels. I talked about this earlier, about that creating that, that dysbiosis or that inflam, inflamed, inflamed state in the gut um, when we have too high stress levels from that gut brain axis. So bringing your stress levels down, I know it seems like, oh, OK, yeah, we all need to reduce our stress. But if you are suffering with gut issues, I can honestly say from firsthand experience, I can see such huge differences in not only my own skin, but also my client's skin when they are in a more stressed state because there's more inflammation in the body. The likelihood, you know, is it a physical or a mental stress? You're creating that inflammation. You're creating that dysbiosis. You're creating that leaky gut. So toxins are starting to circulate around through the bloodstream. They're coming out through our skin, especially often in the face where we've got really thin skin. You know, it's not like the palm of our hand. This is soft, thin skin. It's easier for us to, to detoxify out through the skin. And so stress, you might find that you're getting a lot of acne, rosacea, eczema and psoriasis flares when we are under stress. So it is really important to try and manage that with things like yoga, meditation, breathing exercises, removing yourself from toxic situations and relationships, putting boundaries in at work so that you can try and reduce your uh, stress levels. And have good skin. That's good. Skin, sorry. So mindful eating. Now you may think, oh gosh, someone just talking about mindful eating, but I can't stress enough how important this is. Mindful eating is what will trigger off our digestive system to work. So it's called, when you start and see food, that's called the cephalic phase of digestion, where we see food, we smell food, we taste it, and our body will then start to turn on the digestive system. It's like if you don't go through, a, if you don't think about mindful eating and sit down, you eat food properly, it's like putting food in a cold oven. You want the oven to be warm so everything's ready to go when you put it in there. So the more that you can start to uh, smell, taste, look at, feel, move it around your mouth, the food, the more you're going to start to produce the digestive enzymes, you're going to start to produce your bile acids, your stomach acids, you're going to be able to emulsify fat, so you're going to start to break down protein, which means then you're going to digest the food better. And the more that you digest the food, the more nutrients you can extract from it, and the more that you're digesting food and the more nutrients you're extracting, 
the, the stronger and more robust your gut's going to be, the healthier your immune system's going to be, the better type of stool you're going to have, which is going to help then excrete hormones and toxins and waste, which means we're going to have cleaner skin. So I encourage you to sit down, smell the food, turn the computer off, turn the TV off and be with your food so that you can practice a bit of mindful eating. And it does pre- take practice. It's something that's taken me a while to, to come around to, but I really do see the difference when I sit down and, and eat food mindfully. So pre and probiotics. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, do I need to take probiotics for my gut health? Well, you can get them from food. You know, I would say there's no point in going in with a supplement if you can get it through nature itself. Now, pre and probiotic foods are important because prebiotic foods feed the bacteria in our gut and they feed the the good and the bad bacteria, but they feed the bacteria in our gut to help them grow. So the more that we can get a diverse range of prebiotic foods, the more we can get a different variety of bacteria in the gut, the stronger and healthier our gut will be. And the probiotic foods, on the other hand, are foods that already have bacteria in them. And when they have bacteria in them, it means that we are then able to um, populate the gut with good bacteria quite straight away. So you want to get a bit of both. Now, prebiotic foods, onions, garlic, asparagus are great. Um, and then probiotic foods, sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to if you're not so used to them. So things like your kimchi, your sauerkraut, your kombucha and tempeh and, and you know live yogurt as well are great sources of pre and probiotics. What I would say, though, is if you start to put pre and probiotic foods in the gut and you're noticing an increase in gas or bloating or, or burping, um, then it could be that that's a sign you've got bacterial overgrowth, which could possibly be SIBO. Um, And so putting pre and probiotics in the food may actually make it worse. So it's definitely something that I would, uh, you can experiment with first. And if you're noticing, yep, no, these foods are definitely causing me reaction. Do get in touch so that we can work on putting a bit of a SIBO protocol in place for you so that we can kill off that overgrowth of bacteria. And then we can get your gut microbiome being where it needs to be. So a little recap then, the top five tips for better gut health and skin. One is eating those three proper meals a day so that we're balancing our blood sugar, so that we're not spiking our cortisol, so that we're making sure that we've got a good, healthy three meals a day in there to keep our energy levels good and enough fiber in there, which is going to help excrete all of our hormones and toxins, our waste and keep everything functioning as it should do. Increasing the fiber, so remember the soluble and the insoluble, because that's what's going to help form a nice stool. And if you're constipated, you need to increase increase your soft and soluble fiber. And if you're, you're um, you've got two loose bowels and you want to increase the fiber so that you can then fall fo- fo- out, <laughs> so bulk the stool out. Stress levels, getting those stress levels down so that we aren't um, creating that dysbiotic state in the gut and creating inflammation and, and having an impact on that gut brain access. Um, mindful eating so we start that cephalic phase of digestion so we see the food so we taste it we digest it and we're bringing all of our uh, digestive juices where they need to be and, and functioning like they need to remember that hot oven is what we want things to be going into not the cold one uh, and prebiotic foods and probiotics foods which we just talked about and the importance of them for good gut health so that is it in a nutshell. We've covered so much today. So thank you for bearing with me as we as, as I've sort of rushed through all of those things. But I really hope that it has helped you and that you've understood what I'm talking about and the benefits of looking out for your gut health in order to heal your skin. And this is from someone that has come from, you know, their own background with gut health um, and skin issues. So please do get in touch. I have got my hormone balancing program um, available until tomorrow night uh, at the special offer of £129. But if you are struggling with any other gut issues or any other issues within female health, so pregnancy, fertility, hormones, do get in touch with myself or someone from my clinic because we are absolutely here to support and help you um, improve your health. It does not need to be uh, that you are stuck in with a, with a bad gut or bad skin forever. There's so much that can be done. And this is from my own personal experience, so much so that I quit my job to become a nutritionist. So I know that this does work. 
So please do check out the replay, watch as many times as you need so that you can really understand everything that's going on with the gut and the skin and all the other areas that we spoke about today. Um, and I hope to hear from you soon. So please check me out on Instagram, message me on Facebook, drop me an email, check out the nutrition blog, uh, and we will um, leave it there. Thank you very much.